Maca's guides. <laughs> hey everyone, Maca here with yet another 100% full game walkthrough for a game on Game Pass. Today we are playing Planet of Lana, which did release in May 2023. And you can tell by how long the video is, that is roughly how long it'll take us to beat the game clocking in around three hours. Now there are a couple of things I will be pointing out before we get started, just so that we're all on the same page. You can go to the settings, you can go to accessibility, and you can turn off quick time events if you so desire. I'm also gonna scale up the UI just so that it's easier for you as a viewer of this video to see what's happening on screen, but that's up to you. Otherwise, everything's pretty simple. Now before we get started, I am going to quickly, actually I'm gonna press play right now and we're gonna start a new game and as we're waiting for this cinematic you can't skip the cutscenes if you've been watching the channel for a long time you know how I feel about that but as we're waiting for the game to start I'm gonna quickly talk about the achievements there are 25 achievements worth a thousand gamer score and a lot of them are unlocked for completing the game but there are 10 secret collectibles known as shrines we need to collect all 10 each one having its own achievement and then one for getting all of them and there are also achievements for completing the game without dying now there's a specific way to do this and I'll explain this a little bit more in depth in chapter 2 but there are a couple of tips and tricks to make this way easier than actually just sitting down and beating the game so I'll explain how to flawlessly beat the game um, and grab that achievement by the end uh, as long as you follow along with the video uh, I'll explain it but once we do gain control of our character, this is a side-scrolling, platformer, puzzly type game, similar to games you may have played like Limbo or Inside. You'll be running to the right side of the screen for most of the game. Use the left stick for movement, and you can also, this is the tutorial, it's very basic gameplay. You will drop down and then you can run to the left using the movement stick and you can drop down if you you know there's a ledge you'll drop down automatically you can use the left trigger to crouch and this kind of works like a sneaking stealth mode you will need to do that for certain types of enemy encounters and whatnot additionally you can press a to jump and you'll automatically mantle on certain items and then you can press a again to climb up there is also sprint jumps, so if you're running, you can press A to do a sprint jump. You'll need to do that to clear certain gaps in the world. And then here, we'll try to jump across, but we will unfortunately not make it. You'll drop down into the water, and you can swim to the left in this scenario. Once you do reach this boat here in the water, press A to mantle up on it, press A on the ledge to mantle up on the ledge, and we'll continue forward. You'll eventually come to this chef who's cooking uh, in the kitchen, and what we'll need to do is hold the left trigger to stay in sneak mode, and this is just as simple as timing it so that after she looks over her shoulder, you'll sneak across and there's just enough time to make it across without getting caught. So just put yourself in position next to the edge here. Wait for her to look over her shoulder. Once she's looking away, start going across and hold the left trigger to make sure you continue sneaking or else you can be a little bit too loud. After you sneak past, you should unlock your first achievement or trophy of the game. I already have that unlocked, so you won't see it popping on screen, but you'll see all the other pops for the rest of the game. Here, what you can do is sprint across, jump to grab up on the ledge. You won't make it, but if you sneak across, keep continuing to the left of the screen. Like I said, this is basically the tutorial of the game. This functions as chapter one. You can actually get caught by the lady in the kitchen and there are a couple of enemies you'll need to sneak past. So if at any point you do get caught or you feel like you died, you can just go back to the main menu and basically just restart the game. That's gonna be the simplest way to do that uh, this early on in the game. But in chapter two, I'll explain how to kind of uh, make beating the game without dying as easy as possible. Once you do drop down here, you can go up to the cart and hold X, 
move the cart all the way to the left of the screen. It will start rolling down the hill once you let go of it, but if you quickly mantle up on it and then run to the left and jump, you'll make it up the ledge and you'll be able to go into this uh, area to the left here, sneaking through the tight space. Those tight spaces work as transition areas from one area of the game to another. I think they're just hiding loading screens, but typically once you're in them, they're also safe from any enemies or any danger. Like I mentioned earlier, uh, there are some cutscenes in the game, uh, some kind of cinematics here like you'll see on screen right now. Uh, you can tell we're in a cinematic because we're in widescreen. You'll see the black bars in the top and the bottom of the screen. Um, and unfortunately, there is no way to skip these. I don't know if that's by design or not, but for all intents and purposes of this video, we'll have to sit through them. I will probably mute myself for a lot of them. Um, but yeah, just keep that in mind. It does add a little bit of time to the gameplay. Uh, there's around 10 chapters, by the way. After that, continue to the left, which should have been pretty obvious. Uh, I'm going to try to pace the gameplay so that you can keep up with me without having to pause the video too often. If I'm going too fast or too slow, let me know in the YouTube comments below and I'll try to adjust in the next video. I also did change a couple of my microphone settings, so if you hear it, uh, for better or for worse, let me know what you think. Ho hopefully if I did my job right, you can't really tell the difference, um, but at the bare minimum, uh, I hope it's not worse. So this is the uh, cutscene cinematic that kind of sets up the story. Um, our friend here gets kidnapped. I think it's our sister. I'm not familiar, too familiar with the story and the way I'm recording this. Um, I'm kind of recording it section by section. So uh, people get abducted from our village and we're going to be setting out on a journey to basically, you know, rescue them and restore our planet to a peaceful situation. So after that cinematic, we're going to run all the way back to the right and to the village that we were in before. We will stumble upon some enemies along the way. If you do get caught or die, just back out to the main menu and restart the game for now. Um, there are, like I said, we're trying to beat the game without dying for that flawless achievement slash trophy. Um, there are some ways to make it easier, but this early on in the game, uh, you don't have too many options. So here there's some grass and you can crouch in the grass to basically stay hidden. And what we're doing is we're just waiting for this robot to move from right to left. And just don't get caught in the obvious scanning light. Once it starts moving to the right, jump down, run across, and then hide in this second patch of grass. Wait for it to pass over you before you uncrouch and sprint to the right, jumping up on the ledge and clearing the screen to the right. Here you can drop down and continue to the right. And here you'll need to jump in the water to swim underneath the platforms. There's this enemy that has an eyeball and he will either see left or right depending on the direction he's facing. So when you do encounter that enemy later on in the game, just make sure they're not looking in your direction directly at you when you're trying to move past them. We're going to continue swimming under the docks. There's not much to do here. This is kind of more introducing the story and showing that your village is being taken captive. Eventually you'll come out of the water, continue to the right, crouch underneath the uh, little tight space here, and then on your way out, continue to the right. There's another spider there at the top, but that doesn't really matter. You can just continue on to the right. And then here we'll drop down underneath the platform again as more of our villagers get taken captive and we continue swimming to the right. You'll then come up this platform here. 
And this is a little bit of a new mechanic coming up right here. There's this little enemy that goes up and down and all you want to do is you want to wait for it to go up and then you can sprint across and jump and you're just timing it so that you're not in the radius of its scanner. But this time instead of moving left to right, it's moving up and down. Jump up the next couple platforms. Also, if you miss that jump, you'll end up in the water, but you'll be able to uh, pull yourself up and make it across no problem, hopefully, if you're if you're quick. Here you'll drop down into this hut, and there is another new mechanic here. What you can do is you'll have to hold X and then pull to the left to take these uh, planks of wood off of the wall. Wait for your time to crouch under the hole, and then you'll be able to jump down and crouch under the next hole past that enemy. For this spider, he looks left and right, but he can't hear you. So when he's looking left, just wait. And when he's looking right, you can sprint across and go underneath him. I feel like I missed my timing window. Better to be safe than sorry. So I'm going to wait for him to look left again. Once he looks right, I'm going to escape and then run underneath him. He will go to the left and I should be able to keep running if I timed it correctly. If you didn't time it correctly, just wait underneath him until he cycles his path once again. Once you're in that tight space though, your coast is clear and you should be safe. He can't follow you in that little tight space. Here you will be chased by the light enemy and that will force you to run to the right and jump into the water. And then you can exit the water, jump up onto the ledge, pull the planks of wood off the wall. And we'll be introduced to our new next new mechanic, which is the rope. It's like I told you, uh, you know, it's a side scrolling platformer puzzle type game. So you know exactly what the rope's going to do. You can swing left to right wall on the rope, but you can also climb the rope. In this case, we don't really need to swing on it much. We just want to climb to the top and then jump to the right, then jump to the left to climb up the next ledge and then jump across the gap with a little bit of a running start to make it across, crouching under the tight space to move forward. Then you can jump up onto the next ledge and go to the next area. This, for the most part, concludes chapter one. Hopefully you did it without any problems of getting caught. But again, if you did die, I would recommend just going back to the main menu and essentially starting a completely new game. Uh, the little trick I talked about earlier doesn't really apply much until the second chapter or later on in the game. I'll explain it in the next minute or so, by the way, once we start chapter two officially. As I was saying earlier, this little cutscene concludes chapter one. And after the cutscene, we'll wake up and that will unlock our second achievement or trophy, hopefully, if uh, nothing goes wrong with Xbox Live, obviously. And that'll start chapter two. And um, yeah, there's a little uh, title intro sequence there. It's obviously a very beautiful game. The controls are decently tight. Uh, although there are some instances where you feel like you might die as a result of something the game does. Uh, it isn't too long. If you learn everything, you can do it in a couple of hours. All right, so here we wake up and begin chapter two. Now I'm gonna talk about the flawless achievement for the next minute or so. And again, as a reminder, this is important because I don't wanna have anyone reach the end of the video and then kind of be mad that they didn't understand what was going on. So flawless is an achievement that we get for beating the game without dying. But the important part of this is that this counts chapter by chapter by chapter. So you have to complete chapter one without dying one time, chapter two without dying one time, chapter three without dying, and so on and so on and so on. If you want, you can just play through the game normally. And if you remember which chapters you died on, you can just replay those. But if you want to just grab this achievement as you play through the game, the easiest thing to do, I'll show you that right now, 
is there are basically two ways to save yourself uh, from a death. So let's say that there is a big gap here and I jump and I fall in the gap. If I pause my game as I'm falling, as I'm about to die, but I have not yet died. If you're really quick on the pause, you can pause the game and press reload last checkpoint. And that'll basically save you from dying. But you have to make sure you pause the game before the game has registered that you're going to die. So you can save yourself from a death by reloading the last checkpoint. However, let's say I'm going to repeat the same process that there is a gap and I'm going to try to jump across that gap and I fall in that gap or there's an enemy that catches me and I die and the screen will fade to black. Now, because I died, uh, I can't just reload last checkpoint. I have to restart that chapter. So the best way to do that, if you do die, go pause your game, go to main menu from the main menu, press play select the save slot that you were in and instead of pressing resume press unlocked chapters here you have to start the chapter you were on so for me chapter two i'm going to press it this will restart the chapter from the very beginning and then you can try to play through that chapter from beginning to end without dying and that's basically what you have to do from beginning to end of each individual chapter without dying you don't have to do the whole game in a row. You don't have to do the whole game in one sitting. You have to do each individual chapter from beginning to end without dying. And that's going to be the easiest way to do it. If you want to just beat the game and get all of the achievements by the end of it. Hopefully that made sense. And now we can begin chapter two. Also going forward, I'm going to be editing out any of my mistakes or deaths. So you won't actually see any deaths happening on screen. That's just to make sure I'm not wasting your time as a viewer. There's a lot of these little cutscenes in the game where in between puzzles, there's like a 30 second to one minute long section where you're just kind of walking to the right. So there's a lot of sections of the game where there's not really much going on. I will do commentary when it's appropriate, but there will be some times where I'm pretty much just walking to the right. And hopefully you can figure out that uh, that's all we really need to do to basically get to the next puzzle or the next area where there's something of actual importance to note. For this, it's super simple. Just make sure you're having a running start and jump over the gaps. If you fall, don't worry about it. Nothing really happens. You just got to start from the left and then uh, go back and try again. Here we're introduced to a pig type enemy and what you want to do is you want to jump down into the first patch of grass once he's turned around and you want to make sure you're crouched in that grass and wait for him to turn around again. On his second phase here, you want to stand up and run to the next patch of grass and you do have to crouch or else he can see you from really far away. And then you want to wait for him to turn around a third time and then we can leave the area as soon as we're through to the next screen. We have completed it uh, perfectly. The puzzles obviously start off really simply, but as you play through the game, more and more mechanics are introduced, more and more timing, more and more, uh, you know, difficulties. Here there is a hill. You will begin sliding and you have to jump across the gap at the end of the slide. You don't have to do it at the exact last second, but there isn't a huge window there of opportunity. You got to be pretty good at the timing. Again, if you missed, you can try to reload the last checkpoint or you can uh, reload the entire chapter if you went through the hole completely. Here there's a little bit of a weight system with some elevators. So what you wanna do is you wanna run all the way to the, the right, drag this box almost all the way to the left. So we wanna drag it between uh, these two pillars that I'm coming up on here. Once here, you wanna jump up on the box, jump to the right in order to lower the platform then jump to the left to end up on the other structure. You'll be able to climb into the structure to find the other box. Hold that box and then drop it down. The box can't hurt you, so don't worry about that. Once you're ready, grab the box and move it over. And now we have two boxes, which is enough to basically solve this puzzle. 
What you want to do is you want to move one box, the closer one to the right of the screen in between these two platforms. We're going to be using it to jump to the right. And we're going to be using the box that we knocked down earlier uh, as a weight on this left side platform here. So now we'll be able to jump to the right and we don't have to worry about the entire system moving. So this is basically the solution to this puzzle. Uh, they get a lot more complicated, obviously, as we kind of play, but hopefully that was pretty simple to follow along with. And then just continue on to the right of the screen. Here you'll hear another peg, and what we need to do is this one's based on a little bit of timing. You want to stand on the edge and press down to hang from the edge. Wait for the pig to see you from as far away as possible, and once he begins charging, hold up and then jump across and down and start running to the right. With the pig behind you, jump across the gap and the pig will fall into the hole, allowing you to proceed. This pig then dies underneath us and we will drop down and go to the left. The natural progression is to the right, but there is a collectible here and something we need to grab. So to get your first shrine, go to the left here, past the pig and into the cave, interact with this shrine to get your first of 10 pieces as well as an achievement uh, to unlock. There it goes. Hopefully it unlocks in a second here. It unlocked on my PC. There it goes. And then you can go over to the right hand side. You can interact with the pig, which now uh, is no longer with us. And you'll notice that there's these kind of mushroom plants and they work as pressure pads. So if we put the pig on this pad, it'll extend this little bridge and then we'll be able to jump to the right. And we'll be able to use this new platform because of that pressure pad and then you can jump to the right and continue on. Jump up onto the ledge and then crouch into the hole. Here we're introduced to a new companion we'll have for our journey. Their name is Mui. You'll see them get captured inside of this cage and we will be freeing them and trying to basically become friends with them for the rest of the chapter. So once you gain control of your character, this puzzle is really simple. All you really want to do is drop down into the middle section, hold X to drag the trap all the way to the far right hand side and then you can go over to the switch on the left hand side and activate the switch by pulling it to the right. This will open up the trap and then Mui will continue on to the right hand side. It's not that simple to get him to be your companion, but across the next few puzzles, we'll make a new friend. Then you can drop down and jump on the first, second and third ledge to navigate to the right hand side of the screen. At this point in the game as well, you have to worry about yourself dying, but you also have to worry about Mui. If Mui gets captured by like a robot, for example, this does count as a death and you will have to either uh, cancel that death by reloading the last checkpoint or restarting that chapter if you do want that flawless achievement. At this point, just continue to the right though. Here you do have a little bit of a larger gap to cross, so make sure you jump at the last second. After you use the rope, you'll come to this jumping puzzle. You'll jump across that first platform and you will unfortunately go through the wood. Here you want to navigate to the left hand side of the screen up onto the ledge and then you can jump through the planks of wood to reveal a secret path underneath. Once here, you should be able to crouch under and get to the end of this kind of little cave. 
At the end of the cave, just take the planks of wood off of the entrance and you'll be able to get through. Here, Mui will actually give you the rope to be able to climb up. So he does like you a little bit. He wants to uh, thank you for uh, releasing him out of that trap, but he is still running away from us and we're still trying to catch him. This next scene does involve two quick jumps, so make sure you complete them successfully. And this really does show off how beautiful the game is. You can capture a pretty nice screenshot even if you want to use it as your dashboard background, for example. That's also the picture they use for the chapter select of chapter two. We're just continuing to the right, as I have said previously, towards the next puzzle, which is probably the hardest one of the chapter, so get ready. <laughs> Now for this little puzzle, Mui will get stuck in a trap and there will be that spider robot to the right hand side. This spider robot moves to the left and to the right and continues that same pattern over and over again. Basically, we can only complete actions as that robot is looking and moving to the right. So the first action you want to complete while he's not looking is you want to drop down from the ledge above and into the grass below, making sure that after you land, you stay crouched and hidden. Now, the next action we want to do on this next rotation of that spider robot is we want to move Mui's trap towards the right hand side so we can use it as a ledge to jump up. So again, the a timing window on this is pretty tight, so try to be quick. You can always do it twice if you need to. And then on this third timing window, what you want to do is you want to jump up on the box, jump up on the ledge, and then go towards the switch. There's a chance that the spider bot will see you, and that's okay as long as you sneak into the cave before they get you. You are fine and safe once you're in here, and then you want to wait for that robot to go back down. Activating the switch will release Mui, but you want to make sure that you activate the switch when the robot is facing to the right and as far away from the trap as possible. So I am going to wait here for another rotation just to be safe. But once the robot looks away and is basically directly under me, I want to open the trap. If you open it too early, it will hear that trap being opened and it will capture Mui failing the checkpoint and the chapter. Once you're safe, you can continue to move on and uh, drop the rope down and continue through to the next side of the screen. Here, there is a specific set piece which will trigger a little bit of a cutscene, so you just have to sit back and enjoy for the next little bit. We then wake up in a little bit of a dream sequence. This happens a couple times in the game where we end up back at this specific point from the tutorial. And basically when you're walking to the left, it's just kind of like you're progressing the story and uh, things like that. So when you're walking to the left, generally speaking, you don't have to worry about too much. You're just kind of participating in like a story building activity. Um, and that's what's happening here. We're gonna walk to the left and we're gonna notice some things from what we did in the tutorial or chapter one and that will eventually end this kind of dream sequence to end chapter two and then bring us into chapter three
Now, as you wake up here, this is basically the beginning of chapter three. So if you were able to successfully complete up to this point without dying, you've done chapter one and chapter two. So good job. And once you begin chapter three, Mui will wake you up and you've basically now completed your bond. He is now your companion for uh, the better part of the rest of the game. Um, and as soon as we get up, we can interact with Mui and pet them. There will be a large uh, control thing that shows up on your screen to let you know how to do it. Uh, but technically this is missable as you don't need to do it, I don't believe. So hold the left trigger to crouch next to Mui, and then press X to pet them, and this will unlock uh, another quick, quick and easy achievement for us called It Purrs, and it's for some reason worth a whopping 40 gamer score. And then we can actually start off with chapter 3 right after that. At this point, we can basically start the chapter by moving to the right. You may unlock an achievement called Rescuing Mui at this point, which I already have so you won't see unlock on screen. But we can just begin moving to the right and uh, progressing. The Rescuing Mui achievement is story related, so that should be pretty obvious. Now there's a new mechanic here where you can make Mui stop by pressing B and then you can hold B to basically recall them. I'll show you how that works once we actually reach a puzzle that requires it. He'll follow us uh, as long as we keep moving to the right. And it's pretty obvious where you should go, but I'll rejoin you in a second here with some commentary. So this is the first time we'll have to use that. You'll notice that standing on here will extend the bridge. So we're going to tell Mui to stop by pressing B and that allows him to sit on that kind of mushroom thing and extend the bridge for us. And then we're going to go ahead and jump across. Now when we hold B, Mui will follow us, but if you don't let him do it safely, uh, that's going to basically result in a death. So we're going to stand on that platform on the right hand side to extend the other part of the bridge. Hold B, Mui will follow us. Do not leave this platform as he's using it or he will fall. And then we can continue. Here we're going to do more or less the same thing. We're going to tell Mui to stop by pressing B. We're going to jump across. And then we're going to hold this platform open. We're going to hold B to allow Mui to come to us. And then we're going to make Mui pause on the platform, the little mushroom things we're standing on. This will allow us to go down onto the platform and then jump to the left hand side onto here. We can then press down and drop down. Let Mui stay where he is. Do not call him down here. At this point, walk to the right hand side, jump up to the ledge, jump up to the next ledge, and then jump to the left and go up the rope. Near the top of the rope, jump to the left. Pull the planks of wood off of the beams. And now you can hold B and recall Mui towards you so we can continue the puzzles. If he ever stops following you at any point, which does happen pretty often, just hold B to make sure he's with you. You don't want to leave him behind. Now here there's a little bit of a new mechanic. Hold the right trigger and then use your left stick to point where you want Mui to go. So we're going to point up on this ledge using the left stick and we're going to press A. That'll send Mui up there. And once he's in this location, you can interact with many items pressing Y he'll drop down the rope for us. Whenever you do that, you want to hold B to let him follow you or else he will forget. Here, jump to the right-hand side 
and continue. Now at this point, there's a little bit of a new mechanic um, that has to do with like the, your ability to grapple and hang on to stuff. So once we gain control of Lana, who's the main character, what we want to do is we want to press down on the left stick to hang, press down on the left stick again to go to a lower, um, you know, object, and then hold left and press A to jump. That's the only way to make this jump, and we will be using that mechanic uh, throughout the game every now and again. So in this next little puzzle, there is an opportunity for Mui to be snatched. So just make sure you kind of follow the puzzle solution as perfectly as possible. Uh, it's pretty safe to do uh, this puzzle, but there is kind of a specific thing they want you to do. Crouch under here. And what you want to do is you want to run all the way across this area into the little cavern on the right hand side. Mui will follow you here. Once inside here, press B to make Mui stay, and then run back as Lana back to the other side. The rock will not follow you unless you have Mui following you. At this point, you should be able to jump up onto the ledge, onto the next ledge, and you should be able to get across this gap. Once across the gap, you can now hold B and summon Mui to come back to you. And because they're going to do this pretty quickly, they shouldn't get snatched by the large rock. And they should rejoin you without too much of an issue. You can also uh, use Mui to interact with certain objects like rope that is cuttable. Yeah. Press Y with any rope that has a potential break in it for Mui to basically gnaw at it and release the rope, making sure to call him to follow you after that. Here, what we can do is we can use that left, tr the right trigger to make Mui go underneath this very small hole that we can't navigate through in order to extend this little bridge for us. And then we can get up top and recall them. Mui obviously can jump a lot higher than we can and can navigate through much tighter spaces than we can. At this point, drop down. And there's a new mechanic here. If you look to the left, you can use the left trigger or the right trigger, I mean, to show Mui this hole in the ground. You'll need to drop down so you can get a little bit closer to it. Once Mui is standing on that hole in the ground, you can interact with it and they will burrow underground and pop up somewhere else. And that'll extend our bridge for us. Once that bridge is extended, you can jump across the gap, hold the new bridge for Mui and recall him by holding B, making sure not to leave this platform until they are safe. Jump up to the ledge and then jump up and to the left. And here is our next shrine. What you'll want to do is go to the very far left here. We'll kind of ignore this puzzle for the time being. The screen will extend to somewhere where you couldn't see it before. You should be able to just jump up on this cart and then jump across the gap. Go to the left and interact with the shrine for number two out of ten. Once you back out of that menu, it should unlock the achievement and then we can jump back up and try to complete this puzzle. What you want to do is you want to get Mui to bite this cable right here at the top. That frees up the cart, which we can now drag across. You'll notice that when the cart is standing on this panel, it turns off the electricity to the switch. 
but we actually need the cart to make a jump first. So take the cart all the way to the right hand side, jump up on the cart and then navigate across this gap, making sure that Mui is following you. And then you can drop down here and pull the planks off of um, the, bo the, the boards here. You know what I'm talking about. Hold the right trigger to place Mui under this cable, but do not let him bite it yet. It is electrified. That will kill him and will be a death. Go back down to the cart, drag the cart onto that panel to turn the electricity off. Once it's off, it's pretty obvious and you can now have Mui bite the cable, let go of the cart, and we've basically cleared this puzzle. Do not jump on the trap, instead drag the trap to the right hand side. Hold B to recall Mui. And then you can continue to the right. Jumping across the gap, making sure to do that safely. And then dropping down the ledge. Here we have another spider bot enemy. You know the drill, when he looks to the right, jump down. And then we're gonna crouch in this grass and we're gonna wait here until he goes back to the right hand side. Once he looks away from us, we should be clear to jump up on the ledge and continue to the right. This can be a close call, so make sure you crouch underneath before he sees you. If he does see you, you should still have enough time to get through that little um, crouch spot and be safe. Continuing to the right to progress the story. Here we want to make sure Mui can get the rope for us, so use that right trigger to command them to go up. And then Y to drop the rope down. Whenever they do do something like this, you do have to hold B to allow them to follow you again afterwards. This is just world building and story building. Um, there's really nothing to, you know, fear here. There's no puzzles. This is just, uh, you know, a part of the game. Let me know in the comments down below if you're uh, enjoying the game or not. It's definitely beautiful and it definitely has some good puzzles. But there are a lot of these sections, like the amount of time between puzzles is a little bit long for my personal liking. And I would have really liked to be able to skip cutscenes personally. Once you reach the next village, you'll drop down and continue to the right hand side past all of these platforms. Grab the cart of logs, pull it to the right in order to use it to jump up onto the ledge. Right here, you want to make sure Mui stops following you, so command them to stay as there is a rock uh, enemy here that can get a little dangerous if they follow you and we don't need them right now so we're gonna let them stay there and then we're going to climb up the ledge to the right and then to the left and go to the far left where you will notice a cart technically this cart is required for a puzzle do not push the cart down yet we need it for something else much more important probably for the majority of uh, people looking to grab the achievements and whatnot. So go under here, do not drop the cart. Instead, climb the cart or the box or whatever you want to call this object right here. Climb this item and then climb again to reveal a pretty well hidden um, any minute now. There we go. Uh, to reveal a very well hidden shrine, this is our third shrine of the game and interact with it to unlock that achievement. 
All right, so to actually solve this little puzzle, drop down, move the cart uh, or the box to the right-hand side, grab the box again. I'll try to call this a box from now on and move it all the way to the right until it can no longer move to the right with us. And at this point, you can jump up to the right here and we'll call Mui. Doing so will make the rock monster move to the right to try to follow him, pushing that box up. And we can now uh, basically navigate to where we want to go. Uh, you can't make this jump, unfortunately. You do have to move, continue moving the box to the right. And then we can jump up to the ledge and continue to the right. There's basically only one more kind of puzzle thing enemy encounter to uh, do before we finish off chapter three. So here it is, or well, it's right after this. Here you'll navigate underneath. This one's really simple. You shouldn't really have an issue here. You'll point Mui towards these uh, kind of mushroom plants and they will step on them to extend the little bridge for us, which we can navigate across. Wouldn't really call this much of a puzzle or an enemy encounter though. And then make sure Mui follows you after this. So I'm not really a big fan of this next puzzle, but it is what it is. We got to do it. You're, you'll stay in this first patch of grass. When the coast is clear, move to the second patch of grass. And in the second patch of grass in the middle, there is a hole. What you want to do is you want to send Mui through the hole as bait for the spider bot. So I'm going to send him through the hole now. Once the spider bot sees him, press Y to send him back through the hole and then make him follow you to the outer edge here, staying in this grass and stay hidden for a little bit of time. Then what you want to do is you want to use your right trigger to send Mui to the rope above. Make sure you wait until the robot is not looking at you to do this though. Once Mui is at this rope, what you want to do is you want to use Lana to bait the robot to the right hand side of the screen. And then you'll be able to drop these logs onto the robot. So if I stand right here, the robot will see Lana. And then I'm going to go hide underneath this cave. And I'm going to use Mui to drop the logs on the robot. It doesn't have to be good at timing because you are safe in this corner. But that is the solution to this puzzle. And it isn't, it's not that bad if, uh, it, honestly, if you know exactly what to do, it is a little bit finicky though, so how sometimes uh, things react and the controls and whatnot. At this point, we're basically done chapter three. There's kind of one more jump you have to do um, that you want to do in a very specific way. So don't turn the video off yet. If you are finding the video helpful though, I would really appreciate dropping a like and feel free to share this video with a friend if you think it's helpful. So this is a little bit of a cutscene. We're not quite yet in chapter four, but what you want to do when you rega regain control of your character, be a little bit careful here. You don't want to get too close to the edge and fall down. Our goal is technically to fall down into the hole, but we have to do it in a specific way or else the game classifies it as a death and not as story progression. This game also reminds me slightly of Somerville if you followed that guide I did uh, earlier this year. So you have to hang off the ledge and then press down to hang off the next ledge and then jump across. This jump will not be successful, but this is the way you are supposed to successfully reach chapter four. Congratulations if you beat chapter three without dying, by the way. So chapter four is pretty dark. Hopefully you can see it and you want to turn up the YouTube quality of the video to as high as possible and 
Uh, you can't really turn up your game brightness, but you can work with your monitor brightness if you want to turn it up. The way this chapter works is you can make Mui sit on this here, and this will kind of light up the way for you. Uh, it can be pretty much impossible to see where you should go unless he lights up the way for you. So you're going to make him sit there. You're going to climb to the next area. And then once you're in the next area up on this ledge, you can call Mui over. Mui is able to navigate even through pitch, ba even through pitch black darkness, luckily for us. Once Mui catches up to you onto this next pad, press B to make him stay again. And this time we're going to go for a shrine to the left. You'll see a rope hanging, very hard to see. But now that we can see it, you can climb the rope to reveal the fourth shrine of the game at the top of the rope and to the right. Make sure you make the jump successfully to the shrine and use it backing out to unlock the achievement. Go back to the rope, climb down, and jump back to where we came from, which is where Mui is waiting. You may want to practice a little bit of rope swinging just because uh, you want to be able to make sure to make the gaps. Keep Mui on that platform so you can see where to go to your right-hand side. Jump across the gap, and then dropping down onto the next little area, calling Mui over to bring him to the next one. Tell Mui to stay on here and then proceed again. Now you can see this gap that we wouldn't have been able to easily see before. And then call Mui over to yourself on the other side. Using the right trigger to place Mui on the next little uh, light pad, which will reveal the rope. You can climb the rope, swing a little bit back and forth, and you should be able to make this jump pretty much perfectly and easily. Once across, feel free to call Mui over, but you want to make sure you can see where you're going first. Now that Mui is following us, we just have to navigate across these uh, pillars, just jumping across, making sure not to fall down. Use the rope swing to get across the ledge. You do want to make it all the way across. Feel free to swing a little bit if you need that extra distance. And once you make it across, you want to use the right trigger to order Mui onto this hole right here. Do not send Mui through yet. Instead, what you want to do is you want to get up on the rope and you want to go down the rope so that the spider sees you. Once the spider sees you, you want to climb up the rope and then send Mui through the hole when the spider is on the left of the screen. This should light up the center for you and this uh, the spider will not cross through this light as they are afraid of it. You do want to swing back and forth to make your way across the large gap, and then you can drop down, uh, making sure not to move Mui until you are ready. So go to the end, jump up the first ledge and up the second ledge. You can then pull the planks off of the wall to release Mui. And then once ready, use the right trigger to order Mui to get the rope for you by standing on the edge and aiming towards the rope. The spider will be able to come to you now, but you should be safe. As long as you don't drop down to the bottom floor, you should be good. Grab the rope and jump to the right to proceed. And make sure Mui is following you. Simple jumping of a gap right here. And then use the right trigger to send Mui up and to the right. You do have to stand pretty close to, to allow this to trigger. And then press Y for him to activate this door and allow us to get into the next area. Make sure Mui is following you. And these ones, we're just gonna run past. You don't actually have to stand on them. They kind of activate as you run past them. Drop down into the next one, crouch through the next area. Again, it can be a little bit hard to see, 
and then go past the next one to reveal a rope swing. Go up the rope and jump to the right at the top. From the top of the ledge, just continue to the right and we will be doing a quite a large puzzle coming up here. I'll explain how it works, but I'll also just show you the solution. There isn't much danger in this chapter in terms of uh, enemies or dying or anything like that. There's a couple of uh, jumps you'll need to make, but otherwise it's pretty simple. Now, if you do want to know the solution to this upcoming puzzle, standing here will unveil a mural and two, there are going to be like kind of four things we need to know. And the first two can be found on this mural in the top left corner and in the bottom right corner, the kind of dot, 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 line, dot, dot, line. And then on the bottom right, you'll see there's like two lines sticking out the top. So there's going to be four of these pictures and we're going to, if we were to memorize them, um, we would be able to solve the puzzle. I'll just show you where they are and then I'll show you the solution just to save on time a little bit here. Uh, so once you do enter the area, you'll see the large puzzle in the middle. And if you go up to the left hand side and allow Mui to stand on here, this will reveal the third symbol you need which is now right above us as we exit this cave. And then the fourth symbol is actually near the puzzle itself, uh, just behind this uh, wooden log crate. You can see it right there. So the first one we're gonna do is the one here in the bottom left, bottom right corner, I apologize. I get my lefts and my rights uh, confused, which is not great as someone who makes guides on YouTube. We wanna move this over so that two, line, two dots reveal themselves before the first break. We can then move to the second floor. And what we wanna do is we want zero dots to be unveiled um, before the first uh, line, so it's line, dot, dot, line, dot, dot. Then if you go up to this top right one, and you'll want it so that it's dot, 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 line, dot, dot, line. And then for this top right one, you want it so that there is one dot, line, dot, empty space line dot. This is the solution based on the four symbols we've seen and it will be the same every time you play the game. And then here you can drop down and hold on the rope. If you did it correctly, the bell will move down and only if you play the correct tune will the door open on the right hand side. Hang on this rope until the tune completes itself to open the door and call Mui to follow you into the next area. If the door didn't unlock, that means you didn't select the correct puzzle solution. Here you can interact with this object in order to get the amulet, which is a natural story progression item we will need. I did just unlock an achievement for finding the amulet, but for some reason it didn't show up on screen. It did show up on my PC, which means I have it though. Moving forward, there are now a couple of puzzles to solve, but there's really no danger in dying here. What you want to do is you now have a new ability where Mui can interact with certain types of enemies. So example, if you press Y here, he'll interact with this enemy holding Y, I apologize. And then if you use the right trigger, you can make Mui move that enemy. So pull that enemy to the left and that'll kind of snap it up and it'll open up the next area for us, making sure Mui does follow us across the gap. Here you wanna make Mui go in through the hole to the next area, which will light up our way. Do not jump down, instead drop down to the next area and then you can go up and jump across the gap. Jumping across the next gap. That one's a little bit tricky and almost a little bit cruel because if you don't know what to do with there, you can pretty much die without really being given any evidence as to what you were supposed to do. 
This is pretty much the last puzzle of the room. There's these caterpillar type enemies and Mui can use his new ability to interact with them. So we're going to go up into the left and these enemies only are uh, interactable when it is fully dark outside. So we're going to grab, uh, we're going to go up to this top corner and we're going to make Mui go and stand in front of this caterpillar, holding Y for them to interact, holding the right trigger and using the left stick to push it back into the right. This will make the room dark and wake up the other caterpillar. You can now call Mui down with you and go down here. Tell Mui to go and interact with the next caterpillar, holding Y, using the right trigger and the left stick to pull it out as far as possible. Don't worry, this enemy isn't dangerous to us, but it does need to be interacted with to solve the puzzle. Hop onto the enemy, hop onto the ledge, keeping Mui down there. And now once you're up on this ledge, use the right trigger and the left stick to push the caterpillar back into the hole, which will create another ledge for us. You can now hold B to call Mui with you. That's pretty much the end of chapter four, and we do move on to chapter five just ahead here. For the next chapter, it's one of the shortest ones in the game, but there is a collectible and one or two dangerous areas. So I'm going to show you exactly how to beat it in about 10 minutes. We'll continue forward to the right and just, uh, you know, the drill by now, once we reach a puzzle or a dangerous uh, area, uh, I'll kind of rejoin you with some commentary. Now there's no enemies to worry about in this next puzzle area, just drop down, take the container to about the middle of this large gap above us. You'll have to grab Mui and make him sit on the little mushrooms, and then you'll have to activate the switch to raise the trap. At this point you've pretty much set yourself up for success. You'll have to crawl under the rock to the left. You want Mui to stay where he is for now by the way as he is uh, required to be in his position to get us where we need to go. You can then jump across onto the trap, jump across the trap onto the, uh, you know, darkness ledge. And once you're across fully, you can hold B to call Mui, which will now follow you uh, as he is able to make that next jump. Now there is a puzzle here, but I actually want to grab the shrine first. It's pretty well hidden. What you want to do is you want to move to the right hand side and there's actually in the top right corner of the screen right now there's a ledge it's very hard to see but if you hop up onto here and then you go onto the rope and climb a little bit on that rope and you'll have to start swinging left and right in order to get enough distance to end up on that ledge on the right of the screen and if done correctly it should look like this and you'll be able to then climb up and find the collectible shrine inside for number 5 out of 10. Hopefully the achievement shows up on screen this time. There it goes. <laughs> and now we can continue to the left and you'll want to jump up onto the rope swing. Um, and you'll have to swing and go to the left this time. Mui will not be able to follow us as they are unable to make this jump. So this puzzle mostly functions as our way to get Mui back to us. You'll need a little bit of momentum to the left to make it through. Do not jump up the ledge yet. Instead, go to the left and then jump on the platform. Ride the platform all the way down and then call Mui towards you. Once Mui is on the platform with you, tell him to stay. Once you leave the platform, the logs should raise him up to where you need to be. At that point, you can jump back onto the rope. Do not call Mui until you are through this little section here. Climb up the rope and then swing to the left, jumping. And once you are up here, you can now ask Mui to follow you. And then you can go up and here. 
And then here you can use him to get the rope for you. And you'll want to interact with that rope for him to drop it down, obviously. Climb the rope and jump to the right when you're ready. And make Mui follow you if uh, that wasn't obvious as well. Luckily, uh, it doesn't. This game doesn't make you feel like Mui gets in the way a lot in terms of like ruining puzzles or getting you to die. Uh, they've made it pr feel like pretty tight in general. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this next puzzle that's coming up. I think it's a little bit glitchy and a little bit weird how it reacts sometimes, but it's not too bad. There's obviously a spider here, and you want to make sure that you don't do anything while the spider's looking at you. It will spend most of its time on that top ledge only once it reaches it. So once it's out of the way, you and Mui can move to the middle of the screen. And our first goal here is to uh, command Mui to go into the hole on the right hand side of the screen, obviously while the spider is not looking. So let it go across send Mui across and then make him dig through the hole and he is currently safe. The next thing you want to do is you want to place Lana right here and you're going to wait for the spider to move to the left and once it stops looking and starts moving to the right you're going to hide Lana in the grass on the left hand side. And you want to make sure you do this quick and you want to make sure you hold crouch when you're in the grass. The next thing you want to do, you can do a couple of these things during one single phase, but send Mui through the hole so that the robot sees Mui. And as soon as he turns red, send Mui back through the hole so that he's safe and as Lana, jump across the gap. Now once the spider is under you as Lana, jump across the gap again, hold B to make Mui follow you, and go underneath the crack to complete this puzzle safely. There isn't a huge amount of time to do all that, but it isn't too bad if you do it exactly like that. Hold Y, use the right trigger to pull these kind of vine flower creature things to open up the cave. Make sure that Mui does follow you. Here you can drop down just to be safe and then walk forward. And this will trigger the next chapter, chapter six. All right, so this chapter is known as the Swamps, I believe. And we're going to progress the story by moving over to the right. And here you'll find out that Mui can't really swim and is scared of water. And a couple of the puzzles coming up have to deal with that uh, fact. So in this cutscene, you'll see that Mui does not swim. We're going to have to get him across this puzzle. Luckily for us, is super, super simple and uh, very hard to fail. So we're just going to... We're going to basically just jump into the water and start swimming to the right. Mui won't follow us, so don't worry about him for now. You'll notice that there's a log pretty much above my head. And you can probably see where this is going. Jump up to the right and then up to the, up to the left. Grab the log, uh, spill it into the water, and then hold that log and swim it back to Mui. Once the log goes all the way to the far end, Mui should jump on automatically since he is in follow mode and it is safe for him to hop on now. Or hold B to make him jump on. It's funny how you can play a game five times and every time it'll be different. <laughs> now that you hold the log, bring it over to the right hand side. There have been a couple of updates already since the day one patch. So there's a couple small little things that may change as you play it. But I think the game should remain more or less the same. Once you get to the end, make sure you call Mui who can now jump across. And then you'll be able to... Send him up to the rope 
and use Y to make him bring the rope down for you, which you can now climb to the top and get to the next area. Making sure Mui does follow you to this next area. From here, you can just drop down, drop down again. From the water, work your way to the right hand side. And we're going to grab a collectible first. Go up onto the ledge and then crouch through this very well hidden hole right here to reveal a secret room inside where you can find a shrine. Don't worry about Mui for now, we're just going to leave him behind. Interact with the shrine, you know the drill by now. This will get us the next piece of our puzzle as well as unlock an achievement for us. And we can now crouch through the hole to exit this room and what we want to do is we want to go into the water and swim in the bottom middle here, activating the ledge. Don't move with Lana, but now you can call Mui, who will jump over and come to the right here. Once he's here, you can leave and go up onto this ledge, commanding Mui to the next uh, little plant thing up here. It's a little bit hard to get the angle perfect but you have to be standing pretty close to the edge. And once you command them there, they should extend a bridge for you as Lana to jump up and go across the gap, calling Mui once you're over to continue the game. Here, what you wanna do is you want to put Mui in front of this animal. Hold Y to make them connect. Sorry, I ran forward a little bit too early. Hold Y to make them connect. And then what you can do is you can fill the lake with water by pushing to the right. And you want to fill the lake with water so that Lana can swim across. Once you swim across, you want to use the right trigger and pull the caterpillar type enemy to the opposite direction to drain this little lake completely dry. Once it's more or less completely dry, as much as you can get it, you can now call over Mui to join you on the other side. And then command Mui to grab you the rope and drop it down. Grab the rope and pull yourself up, jumping to the right when you're ready. On this ledge, you'll want to hang down, drop down, jump to the right, and then drop down again, dropping down into the water, and then swim to the left to find another shrine here. Hop up on dry land to interact with the shrine for number 7 out of 10. Alright, so from here there's really only one more puzzle in this chapter. Jump back into the water and start swimming to the right hand side. There's about 5 minutes left in the chapter, but we'll spend most of the time on one puzzle coming up. Uh, once you do swim across, jump up to the ledge, jump up to the next ledge, and then use the rope to swing over to the left-hand side. These next couple of puzzles do require that little bit of momentum, so make sure you are swinging kind of back and forth so that you can safely make it across. There are some higher distances you'll have to be kind of above, and if you do fall from the rope from too high, you will unfortunately uh, not make it when you land. So we're going to be pretty safe on those ropes. Once you pull off the planks, call Mui to follow you to the right. Use Mui on the um, plant bug life thing to pull the vines open, revealing the cave in front of you. And then make sure Mui follows you in there. In this next area, jump down and go across the ledges. 
I guess technically you could swim there, although I wouldn't test it just in case. Actually, that's one thing I haven't tested is jumping into those pits to see what happens. Wouldn't be surprised if there was a crocodile waiting. Anyways, continue to the right-hand side until you reach this uh, rope swing. And there are a couple of things to do here. Mui will not follow you into the water. So just jump into the water when you're ready. Swim across and jump up to the ledge. You may... This one's pretty obvious as to what you're supposed to do, but I'm going to show you it nonetheless to make sure you don't miss any of the solutions. Don't waste too much time. You get all the shrines and everything by following this video, so hopefully you're finding the benefit there. Jump up to the left and then use this rope swing to swing across. You do want to build a decent amount of momentum to make sure you make it easily and safely. Jump across this next gap to the left. Here we're going to do a rope swing to rope swing. Wow, like a daredevil. And again, this is one where you want to swing probably more than once. You can get it in one swing. It's just a little bit risky. That's where I think speedrunning in this game will actually be pretty cool. Uh, you'll be able to do kind of risky moves like swinging only one time. But go to the left here and then you'll end up on this rope. And what you want to do is you want to just press B and uh, go down. And once you drop down, you will fall through the planks into the next area where you can call Mui. Stand near the right hand side and order Mui to talk to the caterpillar. Interact with that and here you can drain and fill the lake using Mui. So we're going to basically drain it um, as much as possible almost. And our goal here is to be able to swim underneath this ledge right here. If you didn't do it enough, don't worry. You can always change the water level while you're in the water with that right trigger interaction. But we're navigating all the way to the right. And then we're going to hop up on this ledge where we'll probably have to fill the water a little bit. And then we're going to fill the water a little more because we are grabbing this log. And we're going to pull that log with us across to the right. And obviously you're going to have to manipulate the water levels accordingly to make sure you are able to get the log with you. Can be a little bit finicky in terms of like exactly what water level the game wants you to have. Um, but you're usually you're pretty safe if you just fill it up too much or too little. As long as you're somewhere in the right zone, you are good. Once you are uh, on the left side with the log, I would just recommend filling the water pretty much all the way to the top here. You can do this somewhat differently, but this is going to be the best way to do it. Once you fill all the way to the top, move the log all the way to the left. And then you can disengage Mui by holding B to call him. And he'll come on over to the log. Hold the log in order to move it now to the right, where Mui can finally join us across this gap that he wasn't able to earlier. Jump up and then have Mui follow you. And this is pretty much the end of the chapter. There was there were the collectibles and everything, but uh, the chapter itself wasn't too hard or too bad. There weren't very many ways to die and it didn't involve too much skill or anything. Use Mui on the enemy here to open up the cave. Make him follow you to the right. At some point around here, you will unlock um, an achievement. Maybe in a second here, actually. We're just continuing to the right. You'll end up upon this structure. Seeing the structure is supposed to unlock an achievement. There it goes, called A Trace from the Past. Navigate up the ledge, go up the rope swing, swing to the left to get up onto the next ledge, and the next ledge, and the next ledge. Mui should be able to follow you without any issues. And then you can drop down in, into the next chapter.
The next chapter is chapter seven. Before we start, a quick achievement check if you want. 13 out of 25 for 370 out of 1,000. So as most chapters, start this one by navigating to the right until you see a very obvious kind of puzzle room or enemy encounter. There will be this room that we can interact with this button here, and doing so will start a little bit of a cutscene. I believe you have to interact with this button in order to open the door on the other side of the room. So this is a pretty much unskippable part of the game. I hope you are enjoying the game. It's uh, pretty well made, honestly, in my opinion, at least. It could probably do without the flawless achievement for beating it without dying, but honestly, that's going to be even more rewarding once it unlocks at the end of the game. Continue to the right after the cutscene, following the obvious path. Here, make sure you use the rope to jump across. Now here we'll be introduced to a new mechanic, and that is these electrified kind of panels. Basically, if you touch that while it's on, you will get electrified, and that will result in you dying. So we can send Mui underneath to press the button, which will then allow us to climb this, and then we can get to the other side safely and call Mui over to continue on. Here, just drop down carefully and you can go through this area and through the next room as well. Another beautiful location which uh, you can even take a screenshot for in your background if you're enjoying this game a lot. A lot of pretty scenery, a lot of pretty scenery for sure. Wish it was a little more dense in puzzles though. Drop down into this area below. You'll notice that there is a spider and you'll want to command Mui towards the electrical panel. Toggling the electrical panel will ignite the floor in deadly electricity. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump down as Lana and that will bait the spider to chase us. And we're going to use Mui to electrocute the spider. Make sure you get a good running start in order to give yourself as much time as possible. Once you activate the panel and kill the kind of slug spider enemy, you can then call Mui over to join you back on this side. Stand in the light to use the right trigger to bring down the rope here. That puzzle is all about timing and you do only have about a one second window of opportunity. So I would recommend being safe and uh, restarting, the check restarting the chapter if you need to through the main menu. Uh, if you find that uh, you weren't successful. Here, drop down. And continue to the right for a little bit. That is a questionably shaped object on that screen, by the way. Drop down here and go to the next room. Here you can get Mui to interact with the bridge extender. And then you can start walking across the bridge 
Once you are all the way on the opposite side, you can tell him to interact with the button again. That will unextend the bridge. And then you can call Mui over. And here you'll also want to drop down as it is a high fall. Sprint jumping off that ledge will result in some not so optimal uh, speedrun path strats, AKA you will die. You'll want to start by jumping up and to the left and then jumping up and to the right. And you'll want to place Mui at the foot of this switch, but do not activate that switch. Activating that switch will power the water with electricity and it will result in a not so great thing happening. Grab the item on the left there and pull it into the water. Grab the other item on the right here and pull it that into the water. Once both of those are in the water, you'll want to make sure you're not in the water. Press Y on Mui to electrocute the water and then press X with Lana to extend the bridge. Then press Y with Mui to unelectrify the water, which makes it safe to go back across now. With that puzzle done, it is pretty easy, but you can technically die. You can now navigate back to where we left Mui, make him follow you across the newly extended bridge. Here, use Mui to get the rope for you. And you want to go up into the ledge on your left. Get a little bit of a running start here to get across to the right and then continue forward. Here you just want to continue walking forward and you will want to call Mui with you uh, as they do stay behind. So make sure you call them and then just use the rope swing to navigate to the right. You will stumble upon an interactable object after these paintings of what seem to be humans. There's a little bit of another story thread, but also some sort of robot aliens, potentially. You'll come up to this platform here and you'll want to interact with this platform. Doing so will trigger a cutscene where you will be uh, seeing this kind of UFO object. And this item will spit out uh, something that we can grab called the bracelet. Uh, which we'll be able to grab after this cutscene. And that will unlock a um, story progression based achievement for us. Which I already have, so you won't see unlock on screen. So pick up the bracelet, and that will start, um, you know, it'll put these kind of alien robot guys to sleep and allow you to proceed. I did unlock the achievement. It was at 9%, which I was actually pretty surprised to see how rare this achievement still was at the time of recording. Hopefully it's a lot more of a popular achievement after this guide comes out. 9% uh, is not very high. But then we can go into the next room for what is a pretty difficult puzzle. This one took me a while. Out of all the puzzles in the game, this is one of the only ones that took me, you know, longer than seeing the answer kind of right away. So you want to drop down and go onto the platform. The platform will lower automatically as it is broken. This platform from now on is always going to lower on its own. And we're going to be basically using it like a timer. So drop down onto these platforms on the right hand side. And then we'll want to be able to jump across this gap to the left hand side. And using this panel, we are able to uh, basically control that elevator. 
But keep in mind, the elevator on its own is always going to fall. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this elevator where we want it, which is roughly right here, because we're going to be using it to go underneath and then jump across that gap and to that switch. Using the D-pad, I would recommend raising the platform all the way to the very top. This gives us as much time as possible. And once it's at the top, hold X to release the switch. The lift is now falling, so you don't have a lot of time. What you wanna do is you wanna go onto that platform where we came from. And now what you can do is you can catch the lift, which is coming down, and then use it to get to that secret switch we weren't able to get to before. So you wanna jump on the lift when it comes by, and then you'll wanna do a bit of a running jump to the left to get into that area. Not a big fan of these jumps, but they are what they are. Stand on the edge and order Mui to stand on the platform. That's where we're gonna actually want him. And you're gonna to wanna to move to the left, and then you'll want to pull off the uh, grate and then we'll want to crawl underneath the grate. And then we'll want to jump across to interact with the elevator again. This time we're going to move this platform somewhere where Mui can do something with it. And you notice that there is a biteable cable, but it is electrocuted, so do not bite it. But you do want to line up Mui with the cable. And then you want to raise the elevator all the way to the top to give yourself as much time as possible to figure out the puzzle. Now what you want to do is you want to let go of the elevator, jump across the gap to the right hand side, and interact with the switch to throw off the power. Doing so will allow Mui to, sorry, any second here, will allow Mui to bite the cable, revealing the, ele the sorry, the, so many words. We bit the cable once there was no electricity on it and that unveiled a bridge that we can now cross. Turn the power back on. I'm trying my best here, folks. You can then, when the, once the power is back on and the bridge is extended, you can go and jump back across the gap and activate the machine. What you want to do is you want to place the elevator at about the halfway point between the platform on the left and the bridge on the right. This will allow us to now cross a gap that we couldn't cross before. So I'm going to put it like roughly right here again, bringing it up all the way to the top to give myself a decent amount of time, releasing the button and then running back across. And once we do get to this bridge, you definitely want to release Mui. That way he'll be able to come with you across to the right hand side. Now, don't make a mistake like me and, uh, and uh, you know, jump and to your death here. You definitely want to take your time, jump across, release Mui, and then jump across again. And Mui will follow you to the end of the chapter. Fun fact, I missed that jump one time and had to replay the entire chapter so I could get the flawless achievement. Slide down to the right hand side in order to start the next chapter. So welcome to chapter eight, probably the shortest chapter in the game. It's like three minutes long. Uh, you'll navigate through this little tunnel to the left and then you'll be able to drop down. Walk, continue. Sorry, I said to the left. I meant to the right. That was pretty obvious. And here you'll be able to go into the grass. Make sure you crouch in the grass to let the robot go above you and not notice you. Once you can sprint all the way to the right hand side and drop down into the hole. Once here, pull the panel off of the machine and then interact with the machine. This will allow you to hack into that robot that we just walked by. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the right trigger to basically use it and you are now steering it. So we are going to steer it to the right hand side. Don't worry, you can't get caught by it. And then you're gonna put it right here on top of these uh, whatever mushroom flowers and that will be used as a weight to get across this um, cavern that I wasn't able to get across before. Don't worry, the robot is pretty much as good as gone and uh, will not bother us. Drop down. I don't know if you have to jump across that gap, but just to be safe, I always have been. And then continue to the right for a bit.
that is the end of chapter eight. Um, there is now about a one minute cutscene, though. All right, so this is the beginning of chapter nine, easily one of the longest chapters in the game. Maybe chapter 12 is equally as long, but uh, as soon as you start, you may think you want to go to the right. You don't. You actually want to go to the left and just keep swimming across the ocean. Um, you'll leave Mui behind. Don't worry about them. This is one of the best hidden collectibles in the game, in my opinion. Uh, would have never thought to go to the left here. Um, because of how far this collectible is. It's like uh, on a little island out here in the middle of nowhere. So keep swimming to the left until you stumble upon the shrine. You'll come up on land and interact with the shrine for number 8 out of 10. Our little shrine picture is almost completed. We're getting there. And then back out to actually unlock the achievement. And then you can swim back across to the right hand side. We'll just go back to where we were kind of going to start the chapter. And you can recall Mui and start moving to the right hand side. Alright, so for here what we want to do is we're going to send Mui kind of through this hole by using the right trigger. And don't send him too far, but if he's close enough to the kind of boar enemy, he'll be able to mind control him by pressing Y. And that's what our goal is here. You're going to wait for him to charge and then press Y to activate that kind of hypnotic sequence. Then you can use the right trigger to push that uh, boar type enemy backwards and onto the pressure plate. And don't break this because you need this to stay. So don't recall Mui and don't move anything. But now you can go and hop up this newly uh, extended ledge. You can drop down. Don't worry, you'll be safe as long as Mui is uh, stuck in that gaze. And then once you're safe and on this next ledge, you can recall Mui up to you. And don't worry, you're safe up here now. And then you'll want to make Mui go up and to the right to lower the little rope for you. And once the rope is lowered, you can jump up on the rope and we can continue forward or to the right of the level and make Mui follow you to the next area. Here you want to jump across the gap. Pretty tight timing window there. Here you want to recall the rope with Mui. Hello, 
Make movie follow you into the next area. And then watch out for this robot by standing in the grass. And then let it clear. As soon as it clears out here, go underneath this ledge and to the left so that you can't be seen. And once the bot clears over you, you want to sprint across this large area to the right, making sure not to get caught. There's a weird screen transition there which can make it a little bit difficult if you're a little too fast. So restart the checkpoint if you do get caught. Same thing happens here, immediately hide in the tall grass. You'll notice that the robots can shoot these enemies that are inside of these kind of grass pits. And what we want to do here is we want to wait for this robot to go uh, to our left and then we can start running across. I decided to do this in two phases instead of one just to be safe. But make sure you are standing near or near ish the right side of this grass. And as soon as he clears you stand up and sprint across, jump over the goop and then sprint in the next patch of grass. You have to jump over the goop as it does slow you down. And then you can wait for a third cycle here, or you can try to do it all at once. I'm going to wait for the next cycle here. And once the robot is over me, I can jump down and to the left and go into the cave. For most of these puzzles, you can do them in one shot, but I'm going to be safe here and not. Now for this next one, what we want to do is we want to send Mui up and to the vine. And then we can drop the vine down. Don't step into the goop. The goop has an enemy inside of it and we're going to need a robot to kill that enemy for us. So we're going to be swinging to the left and to the right. And we're going to be getting as far as we can over that goop so that we can be safe. You can leave Mui where he is and then you'll want to crouch down into the right to enter this kind of side cave. And here what we can do is we can interact with the machine, rip off the panel, and then we can control the robot. Once we control the robot, we're going to use the robot to take out all of the little enemies here. So move it to the right and underneath here, or you actually have to go above, I guess. And once you go above, hover over the middle here and the robot will take care of the enemy inside of this pool of glob. Move over and to the right and there will be a second pool and a third pool and a fourth pool. Take care of all of the enemies inside of these or else you won't be able to cross. Now you want to take the robot and move it all the way up and to the left past the shrine and then land it on the pressure plate here. Once you land it on the pressure plate, you can stop interacting with this machine and we'll now be able to safely head back across to where we came from without having to worry about getting eaten up by the glob. This does slow you down quite a bit. I think jumping in it makes it go a little bit faster. And then what you want to do is you want to swing and go to the left. With the bridge now extended, we will be able to access a shrine that we weren't able to access before. And this will be uh, number nine, I think. So you can grab this shrine and that should be number nine. The achievement will unlock when we back out. I don't know if you can jump down that ledge to the right hand side. I was too scared to test it. So we are going to head back and go down here, go back down towards the vine, jump over the goop, and then we'll be able to jump up onto the ledge and then proceed past the other three goops that we shot the enemies inside of. They will slow you down quite a bit. Here, jump and then drop down into the grass and we can continue forward a little bit. There will be more grass coming up that we will actually have to take cover in, but for now we are pretty safe. Jump up to the rock, jump up to the next rock, and then you'll want to use the rope swing to get across the gap where Mui will not follow us. You can do it in one swing like I did there, but if you want to be safe, you can do it in two. If you fail, you'll just drop down into the water and have to go around. Here what you want to do is you want to drop down, 
from the ledge and then fall directly into the water below, swimming to the left. At this point, pick up the log and uh, move it to the right to get it off of the uh, little rope. And then what we can do is move it to the left in order to get Mui. As before, we'll be able to swim with the log. So just make sure you swim it all the way to the right or to the left, sorry. And then you can call Mui onto the log and we can kind of move him across. Once Mui's on the log, start by moving it now to the right hand side. The solution for the rest of this puzzle is pretty obvious. We're just going to move them all the way across. And once we do that, we can drop a rope and climb into the next area. You do want to take the log with you. For some reason, it automatically uh, stopped carrying it. So make sure you do carry it across the dry land and then dunk it back into the other side of the water. And then make sure you bring it, you actually bring it with you when you're swimming. Once you get to the far right hand side, you'll be able to climb up the ledge here. And then call Mui. And force Mui up onto the ledge above. Dropping the rope down. To proceed. In one of these next screens, you want to be pretty careful. There will be a robot moving back and forth. And you want to make sure you time it properly and you want to make sure Mui doesn't get seen either. So right here, you may notice that there's a robot and then we'll be able to drop down. We'll go across this water and then duck inside of this grass right here. Wait for the robot to go left and then right and wait for the uh, break in that sequence to be able to go into the hut and then into the grass and then wait for the robot to go across again and then you'll be able to run across to the right hand side standing underneath this rock right here send Mui into the grass in front of you which will lure a pig that is in this next room to come towards you there he is and you will be able to use Y in order to basically hypnotize it. Wait for Mui to get nice and close to this pig. And what we're going to need to do is use this pig as bait with the robot on the left. And we're going to get the robot to shoot this enemy while it's standing on the pressure plate. There is a little bit of timing involved here. So just be patient if you're not sure what the timing pattern is. With Lana, you want to stand somewhere around here. And then once the robot starts moving to the left, you want to get the pig enemy on the pressure plate while Mui stands in the tall grass. Only once the coast is clear can you recall Mui. Recall Mui once the coast is clear and have them sit on this pressure plate right here so that both of these platforms above and on the left are ready to go. Wait for the robot to move again for that little break in timing and then jump up these two new platforms which we weren't able to use before. And then jump up into the left. Feel free to wait for the robot to move just in case you do miss that jump. And then you'll be able to go up to this machine and interact with it to take control of this robot. With control of the robot, you want to fly it up basically to where you were and then put it down on this pressure plate at the top. With this pressure plate done, you can uninteract with the machine for now. You can call Mui up to rejoin you. And he'll be able to follow you now with these two platforms extended. And you'll want to place Mui on the on. There we go. On the pressure plate where the robot was. Not on the robot, but on that pressure plate. Heading back to the machine once that happens. 
You can then interact with the machine and move the robot. The pressure plate will remain pushed by Mui. And you can use the robot right here in order to press the button and uninteract with the console. You should now have two extended bridges exactly how you need them to cross. This first bridge you'll cross and then you can call Mui and you should be able to cross the second bridge without a problem. Just be safe and make sure you don't fall. This is a great enough height that you would not survive. You can then interact with this uh, monster here and pull it apart to gain access into the next area. This is a really weird mechanic, which I'm honestly not quite sure why it exists. Here you want to jump to the left, to the right, sorry, and proceed up. Continuing forward. Crouching underneath the cave into the next area. For this next puzzle, it's honestly really long, but it's pretty easy. You want to start by dropping down, making sure Mui follows you, and then order Mui to the kind of enemy that's sticking out of the ground there and this will be able to uh, alter the depth of the water and you want to pretty much drain the water as much as possible and then as Lana you want to swim across and not get taken by the robots the robots are on a quite specific timing but you can one phase it or if you want to feel safer take your time and we're just trying to get all the way from the left all the way to the right Once we're all the way to the right, you want to raise the water level so that you can actually jump out of the water and onto this platform right next to me. And then as soon as you get out of the water, you want to put the water level back down as low as possible because this affects the timing of how the robots move. You then want to cross across the top of this ledge, watching out for the robot in this first break. So be safe and then jump across and into the grass, hiding in the grass until the robot goes over you. Once the robot goes over you, go into the next patch of grass. And then move the log and dunk the log into the water. Feel free to do this in two phases like I just did. I want it to be as safe as possible here. I didn't think it was a great idea to risk it at this point. So just be safe and dunk that log into the water. Once you dunk the log into the water, you want to jump into the water, but not with the log. You want to jump into this middle section uh, right next to me. So I'm going to wait for the uh, next robot here. And once it moves, I'm going to dunk myself in the water and then swim towards the log. So here again, the timing matters. Just be as safe as possible. And you want to basically grab the log and take it with you to the right hand side all the way as far as you can don't raise the water level but feel free to get out of the water at this point at this point you want Mui to follow you and place him on the log get into the water and then you want to pull the log with you making sure not to get caught by any of the robots again the water is at the lowest possible level it can be this is the optimal kind of path that we want. If you correctly time this, you can kind of just go perfectly in one go, but I'm going to be safe and pause just to make sure there's no absolute way that one of the pixels sticks out a little further than it's supposed to. Once you're all the way at the end, climb out of the water and have Mui follow you to the next ledge where he can interact with the kind of uh, door creature thing pull it to the right to unveil the next room and make sure he follows you into it drop down safely and then you're just going to run to the right for a little bit there's going to be a little bit of kind of um you know story uh, unfolding happening until we reach the next kind of puzzle area
It might seem like there is some imminent danger and that you could get hurt, but you're just going to be walking towards the right and experiencing um, all of these kind of robot dudes. Once you're out of the water, run up on this rock. And you'll be able to order Mui to drop down the rope for you. Climb the rope. Jump to the right. And continue forward. Calling Mui to go with you. Alright, so there's a couple more things to do before this long chapter is over, but... We've done a fair bit of it already. What you want to do is you want to jump up onto the sledge, then jump onto the planks to smash through them. And then you can climb underneath this tunnel to the other side. There's pretty much like a one more puzzle and one mini boss battle. There's about, I don't know, seven minutes left um, in this chapter. So move over to the right hand side. Watch out, there will be a robot, kind of soon. So here in the tall grass, you can wait. This, not this one actually yet. Jump up onto the ledge and then continue forward. This is where that robot is. So we're gonna watch out for that robot. And uh, so the coast is pretty clear, so we can go across to the middle area now. And once the robot crosses over, you can jump to the left, then jump to the right, and you want to go all the way up and to the right of this area here. There is a safe area right here, and you'll wait for the robot to come back down. You'll want to use the rope swing once the robot starts moving to the left, though. And then what we can do is jump to this next ledge and then hide in this tall grass by crouching, letting the robot go over you again. As soon as that happens, get a running jump across the gap, pull the panel off the console, and then interact with the robot in order to control it. Once you can control it, you wanna fly it over to you and land it somewhere next to you. It doesn't have to be exactly next to you like it is here, but then you wanna use the right trigger and order Mui to stand on top of this robot and then go and interact back with the console. And now we can fly Mui over to the right hand side and go kind of past that rope and then go up and over. And here, if you time it right, you can bite this rope, which will send the rope down here. And then we can stop interacting with the console and then we can drop down and safely go to the next area. So that puzzle was on the easier side, but that was probably one of the more dangerous things in this chapter. There's kind of a mini boss battle, but uh, it's not too bad. Make sure Mui follows you up this um, rope swing. Interact with the vine door. Pull it open. And then call Mui to follow you into this next room. Be very careful with, uh, you know, uh, make sure you listen to the commentary. Um, because if you don't know exactly what you're doing and what you're expecting, this next section can be a little bit difficult. A little bit of trial and error for most people, I assume, that uh, start it. Uh, but there is a very kind of obvious solution once you know what you're doing. So in this section of the game, this is where it will make a difference uh, as to your accessibility settings. And I have quick time events off. You can have them on. They're really, really easy, but it is going to make a difference in this section from what you see on screen. If you have quick time events on jump up the ledge, do not go downwards, go to the edge of this rock and allow Mui to sit perched on the edge of the rock. Now, as Lana, you can drop down and go down to the bottom floor and go to the right. There is a boss here that is pretty much a spider. 
And as soon as the spider opens its eyes, you want to start running back to the left. So just approach slowly. It doesn't really matter. But as soon as you see it awaken, start running back. You should have plenty of time. You don't have to be that like close like I am. I just wanted to be extra safe as to not lose a life here. And then once that animal follows you, assuming Mui is in that position, Mui will basically take control of this spider. It will be done automatically for you if you have quick time events off. But if you have quick time events on, you'll see button prompts on the screen that you'll need to press. Uh, they're really simple. You'll have to press Y and X and then mash uh, Y a couple times. And as long as you're successful, again, they're super, super easy. Or just turn them off and they're so easy you don't even have to do them. Uh, but as soon as you complete all those quick time events successfully, Mui will be successful in kind of uh, taming the beast. And now as Lana, we can use this beast as a bridge. Make sure you are remaining in that uh, taming stage. Don't call Mui over. Mui will automatically come over via a cutscene when we cross. So now that we have this, we can jump across onto the next ledge, climb up and continue forward. Mui will automatically rejoin us via this small cutscene. And now we're almost done chapter 10 or chapter nine. <clears throat> um, and we're moving on to chapter 10 uh, by continuing to the right hand side of the screen for a couple minutes here before I have anything to say. As you're running to the right, this is a little bit of story progression. You'll notice the stars and the sky is changing and the terrain is changing and Mui is running free. So just keep running to the right for a couple minutes until you end up at the desert. That very emotional moment closes out chapter nine and then brings us into chapter 10. And there is a story related non-missable achievement that will unlock once you reach this next area. This orb in the sky with the colors reminds me so much of Somerville. It's crazy. If you played that game, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. I also don't say that this game is ripping off Somerville in any way. They came out way too close to each other for that to be the case.
Once ready, start over by going to the right hand side. For chapter 10, there is our last collectible that we'll be able to find in this chapter. Uh, this is a medium long chapter. It's in that kind of 15, 20 minute range where a lot of the chapters from the beginning of the game were. And there are a decent amount of puzzles and ways to die. I would say there is a little bit of danger. Um, the enemies aren't too hard, but there are a couple of instances where it does require some pretty decent timing as well as uh, making sure to be safe on some jumps across gaps. So move over to the right hand side and then you're going to want to wait underneath this ledge right here and you're going to want to be facing to the right hand side as Lana and you want to wait for this spider to come across to the left and what you want to do after it moves to the right hand side is jump on the ledge above you and then on the ledge above that. You want to end up above the spider. There isn't too much time on this, so you want to be pretty quick. But there is a little bit of room for air, and then you want to crouch and let the robot go underneath you, sprinting across and then jumping over it while it looks the other way. I'm happy I actually caught a mistake on video, and luckily we were still able to find enough time to do it. That just proves there is a little bit of cushion there for, for uh, you know, for all the puzzles. There are a couple of timings that are really tight, but that one, I guess, wasn't one of them. For this next puzzle, the only danger is falling down a cliff. So what I would recommend for this next puzzle is whenever you do a jump, make sure it is a running jump. As if you don't do a running jump, you may not gain enough distance to clear what we're trying to clear. So this next one is a puzzle. You'll climb up the ledge and then go into the cave on the right hand side, making sure Mui does follow you. You'll want to command Mui to sit right here on the kind of left of this area next to the kind of cat caterpillar face, but it can't be used yet because there is light. So as Lana, we're going to jump onto the ledge to the right and activate the elevator. Once we do that, Mui should be able to interact with that caterpillar and then make him move to the left to park onto the um, elevator. Now as Lana, get a running start. You may be wondering why I'm being so uh, specific with that and it's because I've died here before. <laughs> and then you can finally go up. You can crouch under here. You can jump up onto the ledge. And then you can use Mui to move the caterpillar uh, over and to the right. This will power up the elevator again. You can then activate Mui to come and follow you. And once Mui is up on the lift with you, you can activate the switch in order to ride it to the top. And make sure Mui follows you. For this next puzzle, you want to get Mui to go up and to the button. Activate the button to release the rope. Activate the button again to bring the rope down. As Lana, grab the rope. Use Mui to activate the platform again, swinging to the ledge where Mui is. Activate the platform again to jump on top of it. And then bring yourself up to the top. And here, what we want to do is we want to wait for the robot rotation. On the first rotation, we just want to run out onto the platform and activate the switch. And then we want to run back to where we just were. And on the second rotation, you want to run past, activate the switch, and then jump down onto the platform. At this point, you should be safe and you can call Mui to join you on this platform. Oh, 
And we can move forward. There will be a puzzle here in front of us with another enemy. And there will also be a shrine. This should be our last shrine if you've been following along. If you want to mop up the shrines after, I will also have a shrine collectibles locations guide posted to the channel the day after the full game walkthrough gets posted. Thank you for bearing with me with this video. I hope it's been useful and I hope you've enjoyed it. Jump up to the platform on the left. Tell Mui to go and sit by the activation switch. You'll notice that the activation switch opens up this uh, pit in the middle. So what we want to do is we want to open up the pit. As Lana, you want to follow the robot to the right and activate the pit so that it can go over you without noticing you. Once it goes over you, activate the pit again and then climb out of it and go to the right, hopping up on the ledge towards the console. Pull off the panel from the console to activate that. And here we're actually going to have a magnet and we'll be able to grab the robot with the magnet, put it down in this hole and then press Y in order to close the door and close the robot inside. We can now deactivate the console and the robot will not bother us. However, there is a shrine we need to get to and we would naturally want to go right to continue the level. Instead, we are going to go get the shrine, which is up into the left here. It's not so, so easy to get this jump. So try to position the magnet somewhere around there and then make sure you hold B to disengage Mui. You do not want to open up that, uh, that door. And now that we have this set up, we should be able to find our last shrine, jumping up to the right, up to the left, and then into this very well hidden secret area, crouching underneath in order to find the shrine. Activating the shrine should kind of complete the map. It'll unlock an achievement for getting shrine number 10, and it also should unlock an achievement worth 110 gamer score for finding all of the shrines. Hopefully those unlock on screen so you can see them, but I guarantee you that they uh, unlocked as they were supposed to. Now that we are done, we can actually complete this puzzle by going to the console on the right hand side and then moving the magnet closer to us here, which will allow us to navigate onto the platform above me, which is a little bit too high and out of range. Somewhere around here looks good. Make sure Mui is following you. And then once you're on this platform up here, you can ask for Mui to go and cut the rope. And then as Lana, you can grab that rope and go up and to the right. If you do want to do a quick achievement check, let's do that. 19 out of 25 for 620 out of 1,000. And of course, if we wanted the 1,000 gamer score at the end, we have to have made sure that we haven't died yet. And then make sure to call Mui over to you. Here, you're supposed to jump across, but instead I'm going to hang off the ledge and then drop down. I found that that's safer than trying to jump across. And there's only a couple of puzzles left, but honestly, they're pretty frustrating and can quickly result in a death. So I apologize ahead of time. It's not my fault, but that you may need a couple of restarts here. Once you reach this puzzle, you want to aim above, make Mui go up to the cable and break the cable. After he breaks it, you can summon him back and then we can use this cable to swing back and forth up onto that far uh, ledge on the right hand side. And jump across the gap when it's safe. Mui should be able to follow us at this point. 
Here you want to you want to make sure you jump over any of these panels that have electricity on the ground. So that's just a timing puzzle. And then you want to make your way down to the bottom here. You want to order Mui to stand right here. And at that point, you do not want to call him for quite a while. You want to navigate through these fans and time it so that you don't get caught up by them. You only want to make your way through them when they are completely off. Do not jump while the wind is blowing. You want to wait for the wind to stop before you jump across the gaps. That's going to happen again. We want to wait. We do want a little bit of a running start. And then we're going to wait for the fan again. Here you can drop down and there will be a robot jump across the gap and you can just wait right here for the robot. You want to let him leave the switch to the right hand side there. And as he leaves, jump up to the ledge and interact with the switch to set it in the other direction to turn off the floor panels. At this point, you can navigate back to where we came from, but you still have to watch out for the fans themselves. They are still powered. You just don't need to worry about the, the floor anymore being electrified. Patience is definitely a virtue here. I would highly recommend taking your time and making sure you don't make any mistakes. It can be very easy to make a mistake here. And then when you're across, what you want to do is leave Mui where he is, but you can now go into the console and pull off the panel to interact with it in order to grab the robot. And you want to fly the robot back to yourself using the upper um, area here. And you want to make sure you watch out for the fans. And then you want to drop down here and then you want to slam the robot through here in order to break it open, wait for the next fan, and then go through the fan and park yourself right here when you are ready. Disengage with the console and order Mui on top of the robot, and then you can control the robot again and we have to fly the robot through the fans. But the air of the fans will blow Mui off and that will result in pretty much an instant failure. This is easily the hardest part of the game in my opinion. So as soon as this fan stops, you want to go through it and then immediately go up and above the next fan. If done correctly, it should look like this. And you'll end up up here safely. Then you wanna go up and slowly, slowly go up here, waiting for the fan. You do not want to be in front of this fan once it starts blowing. And then if you time it right, you can get through this fan and hopefully you did that successfully and on your first try. At this point, what you want to do is interact with the switch on the right hand side. And then you want to cut the wire once it's safe. Cutting the wire will allow us to finish off this level. And what we'll want to do is, uh, exit out of the console and now you can begin to run through the fans which are now fully turned off and you can go to the right hand side you can now get Mui to follow you jump up onto the ledge up onto the wire and then you can swing across to the right when you're ready And there's another puzzle that is not my favorite coming up. So that one was pretty easy to die on. And the next one is as well. Here, what you want to do is you want to drop down into the area. You want to ask Mui to sit on the floor here. And then as Lana, you want to make your way into the first bush. And then crouch in the bush when you're ready. And then we're going to use Mui as bait. 
So once the robot's turned around, use Mui as bait to get the robot on the other side of you. And as soon as the robot spots Mui, send him back through the hole. And then you want to switch plants. Here you want the robot to notice you. And then you want to crouch underneath. And you want to send Mui through the hole. And then you want to call Mui. And you want to stop him inside of the first bush. We're going to kind of do the same thing again here. We're going to get spotted on purpose as Lana. And then we're going to hide again in the cave to the right hand side. We're going to call Mui towards us and we're going to pause him again inside of the second bush. Waiting for the robot to now leave so we can call Mui over to us for the final time and leave this puzzly area. Next up, what you want to do is you want to wait here and then put Mui on this ledge right here in the top left. But you want to wait to do it while the robot is down. Then you want to go down here and as soon as the robot notices Mui, recall him and sprint to the right hand side. If done correctly, you should be able to make it to the cinematic which then plays and unfortunately separates you from Mui. You'll then fall down a ledge and we will have to run to the right hand side. At this point, we're basically just running to the right-hand side of the screen um, until we get to pretty much the end of this chapter. So after this uh, short cutscene, uh, this will conclude chapter 10 and then begin chapter 11. Chapter 11 is one of the shorter chapters in the game, which also kind of in a sense makes it one of the easiest ones in the game, as it's very easy to replay very quickly. I believe this is still technically a part of chapter 10, by the way, but this is one of those dream sequences that I talked about earlier. Whenever you wake up in one of these dream sequences, generally you just run all the way to the left. We are approaching the kind of 75% mark of the game, probably a little bit further even, probably have around 40 minutes left. Probably around, what, two hours and 20 minutes into the video by now, at least. But don't worry. It doesn't get much harder than the puzzles we did in Chapter 10, to be honest.
Now this is officially the beginning of chapter 11. We'll wake up inside of this little kind of uh, village. Not even a village, whatever smaller than a village. A hut, a collection of huts. So for this next chapter, just start by walking to the right. Uh, this chapter has everyone's favorite thing, a, a musical puzzle. Uh, those are the bane of my existence as someone who is very bad at hearing the different sounds of music and recognizing what they are. Uh, technically, the puzzle is solvable through some clues you get, but I would still kind of classify it as a musical puzzle. Either way, we can walk forward and to the right and we'll meet this kind of shaman guy. And this will start a little bit of a cutscene. So there's a lot of waiting around during this chapter. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just wait for this little cutscene to end. Lana, Pama Omena. Moi. Tina. Tilai, Lana. Olai Raku. At this point, you will regain control of your character, and now you do have to wait for this guy right here to move all the way across the screen in order to turn on the electricity to the next puzzle. But as you're walking by, you can investigate the little boards in the back to see how the musical puzzle works. You'll see the sheet music on the left hand side. And then near the bottom middle, you'll see how that line of music translates to a specific sequence of lines and dots. And you're going to be using these clues if you wanted to figure it out yourself. Don't worry, I'll just show you the answer. But you'll, you'd you would want to do this in order to figure out the solution to the musical puzzle. And there's some more evidence as to how this works in the second um, kind of uh, diagram here. And then there's also a third diagram, uh, which you can't actually interact with. But technically speaking, these two diagrams are what you would need to do this puzzle. Um, and the result will be that you play a specific tune and then that specific tune can uh, revive this uh, robot. And then we can use that robot to proceed with the story. So we do have to wait for this kind of shaman guy to activate the switch on the far right hand side through a cutscene. I'm just going to show you what the answer is, but feel free to work it out for yourself now that I've given you all of the clues you need. For the first box, you'll want dot line dot. For the second box, you'll want line line dot. For the third box, you'll want line, line, dot. For the fourth box, you'll want dot, line, dot. For the final box, you'll want dot, dot, line. That is the solution to the puzzle, and once you're ready, you can go and interact with the machine on the far right side. Obviously, it'll only work if the sequence you input is correct and it will revive our little robot friend, which we can then use to uh, complete the chapter. In the next section, what happens on your screen is very dependent on whether you have quick time events on or not. But basically, you're going to be riding this robot from the left of the screen to the right of the screen across the desert. As you're doing that, you'll need to use QTEs to gallop and retain speed and um, 
that'll also allow you to like kind of quote unquote dodge enemies and uh, all that stuff. So you're basically just running from the left of the screen to the right of the screen for the next uh, two or three minutes. And then at the end of that, you will unlock an achievement for doing that story progression. And you will also um, complete the chapter. So at this point, you'll be mashing the X button if you do have quick time events on, which kind of helps you gallop. And you'll have to be pressing it pretty quickly to get enough speed to dodge all of these enemies. But without QTEs on, uh, there's really not much to this section. And then just go to the right of the screen quickly and crouch underneath in order to get into the cave, unlocking the story progression achievement called Close Call, jumping across the gap and navigating uh, to the right, dropping down and continuing until the screen fades to black and the next chapter starts. Chapter 12 is one of the longest chapters in the game. It's also pretty hectic. There's quite a few uh, encounters with enemies, so it's very easy to die. Um, keep that in mind if you are going for that flawless playthrough. A fair warning ahead of time, you'll know this now. I'm not going to get the flawless achievement on screen because of how I'm recording this playthrough. So don't be surprised when it doesn't unlock for me. But if you followed the playthrough, uh, the way I edit this, this is basically a couple of different playthroughs mashed up together. But basically, wait for the robot, and once the robot goes from right to left, you're going to want to sneak over and across the next platform. And then you're going to want to wait again for this robot to go from right to left to jump up on top of the platform that is above us, and then you can make the jump across to the right-hand side. This one's pretty easy. You still want to be pretty quick. There's uh, not a lot of extra time in terms of, uh, you know, you definitely don't want to spend too much time there. In this next puzzle, this one's not too bad. You'll want to go underneath the magnet, crouch under the ledge, grab the box and pull it out into the open here, and then interact with the console on the far right hand side of the screen, pulling off the panel, and then you'll be able to control the magnet. When you control the magnet, move it over to the right hand side and pick up the box. Once you pick up the box, you'll want to bring it over to the left hand side and you'll be using this box to jump up on this ledge. So just drop it somewhere close to the ledge. And then we're going to actually use the magnet itself as a jumping pad to get across this gap. So you're going to want to park this somewhere right in the middle. It uh, is a little bit difficult because this is definitely like a pic pixel perfect jump. There's not a lot of room for air. So you definitely want to place it somewhere right perfectly in the middle. And then you can jump up on the box and then jump up on the ledge. The other thing about this jump is that I'm not 100% sure, but it's definitely close to being high enough to die from a fall. Get a sprinting jump across to finish off this little puzzle. Here you want to enter and immediately go into the grass and then you can follow the robot to the right to the next patch of grass hiding underneath and then jumping up as soon as he goes back to the left 
and you'll be able to barely squeeze by if you're quick about it. I did it kind of in one swoop there, but feel free to take multiple swoops. Here's the spider robot. You'll want to wait for the spider robot to go up and to the left, and then he'll go to the right, and we're basically going to follow right behind it. And here, if you just sprint across underneath it, You'll enter underneath this little cave. Even if he sees you, he shouldn't have enough time to catch you. Then you'll notice that there are some spaceships taking off. We'll want to go and catch a ride on one of these spaceships. Doing so will unlock a story-related progression achievement called uh, No Turning Back or No Point of No Return, something like that. Not 100% sure. Again, as I was saying earlier, I will not be getting the flawless achievement to unlock on screen because of how I'm recording this uh, walkthrough. It's just a fair warning there. Once you get onto the ship, crouch under the boxes and walk forward. The ship will begin to fold to bring you on to another planet. And then you'll also get the point of no return achievement to unlock. After catching a ride onto the strange planet where we believe Mui is, the spaceship will open up and we can continue with the rest of chapter 12. There's still like 20 minutes to go in it. So drop down here, drop down here. Do not do a running start. Kind of do like a quick, uh, like move forward and jump at the same time. But you don't want to end up too far or else you obviously fall into the cracks. And then you want to do that again to drop down into here. You can then walk forward and crouch into the next area. For this puzzle, let the spider bot look to the right, and then you'll want to go underneath them. Be pretty quick. There's not a lot of movement. Time for air here. As soon as the robot turns to the left, you can run out and grab the box and then pull it over to yourself and you want to pull it until it's almost underneath the platform above you. Be quick here and feel free to do it on two attempts if you need to. You can then climb up on this box and wait for the robot again to move to the left. And once he does, you want to jump up on the ledge, pull the switch, and you can do this in two steps or in one. I'm going to do it in one step. I'm going to do it in two steps. I apologize. Got a little worried there. I wasn't sure if I interacted with that correctly. But once you interact with the switch and the robot is looking to the left, which means it's safe, you can now uh, go through this door, which was recently closed. And make sure you crouch inside. If he does spot you, once you're in here, you are safe. Crouch underneath and continue to the right. Now you'll see that a lot of these uh, animals here are uh, unfortunately not making it through the uh, scanner. And then we'll notice that Mui is in one of the boxes. But luckily for us, Mui gets rejected by the um, whatever machine you want to call this. The, the, the gear squasher. And that's good for us because we're obviously, <laughs> obviously we like Mui and... 
We don't want that to happen to him, but he does get snatched up off the assembly line, so we can now go and rescue him in this next puzzle, which has a lot of steps to it, but generally isn't very difficult. Well, there's one section that's a little difficult, but hopefully not too many issues. So continue moving to the right, go through this little electrical panel, then go through this next one. What you're waiting for is for the spider robot to go to the right, and then you can go into this middle section, and you should be able to safely stay in this little area right here. We are waiting for the robot above us to go from the right to the left of the screen. And once it clears us, we have to leave this hole, jump up to the right, get a running leap across, and then you'll be able to hide away for a small period of time. So you gotta be pretty quick here. Get up, and then you wanna hide in here. Then we're waiting for the robot to come back, and then go to the left again. And once it does that, we should have plenty of time for this next move, which is to leave and then jump up and to the right and leave the area. I do apologize. I think I got my lefts and my rights mixed up one time during that uh, commentary. Uh, it's an unfortunate problem I have considering I make guides. Here we'll have a small cutscene where we'll notice Mui gets sucked into the center area. So this is like a five or six step puzzle, but uh, it's quite long and there's some specific ways to do it, but it's not terribly difficult. What you want to do is you want to wait for the robot at the middle of the screen. And we're going to wait for it to move uh, to the left, and then as it moves away from us, we're going to drop down and access the console underneath us. I'm just doing this to be safe. You can probably fit no problem, but at this point we are definitely trying to uh, minimize our deaths. Pull off the console and interact with this. This will give us access to the magnet, not the robot. But we'll be able to go down and we'll be able to grab the robot with the magnet, which is something we want to do. Our goal here is to grab the robot and then put it up here. This is just to buy enough time for us to run across the area. So now that the robot's in here, I'm gonna unactivate the machine and I'm gonna sprint from the left of the screen to the right of the screen. The robot will wake up, but we should have enough time to make it. And we should be able to crouch underneath this area and interact with the other console. This console right here does allow us to uh, take control of the robot. And now that we have control of the robot, what we want to do is we want to knock over this box off this ledge. And the controls with this robot are not great, but you're going to have to get used to them because we're going to have to fly through some specific uh, shapes later on. Once you knock over the box, you can let go of the robot controls. You'll want to pull the box with you to the left. And you just want to make sure that it's within reach of the magnet. And then you can let go of the box and inter interact with the console that activates the magnet. And then you want to put that box inside of the box where Mui is. And this will uh, basically swap the boxes for us. And now Mui will be the one that's put out and uh, onto the ledge for us. And now we'll want to interact with the console on the right hand side of the screen to activate the drone again. And we'll use the drone to knock down Mui off the platform to smash the crate and reunite with him. This will start a little bit of a cutscene. It'll unlock a story progressional achievement called Back Together. And this next little section can be pretty frustrating if you are not good at flying the drone. 
So you're going to have to be pretty accurate with the drone for this next little puzzle. It's hardly even a puzzle. It's more of like a platforming section. Once you're ready, put Mui on top of the drone. And then you're going to want to fly the drone. What we're going to need to do is we're going to need to activate a bunch of switches that activate the electricity. The first switch is kind of directly above you. And you activate the switch with Y. And you want to make sure that you do not touch any of the edges here or else you kind of get electrocuted and obviously that's bad. So the first switch we went through, the second switch we kind of went through, and then we can go to the right. You want to just navigate through here nice and slow. You're basically feathering the right trigger in order to get where you need to get. This next one is directly above me, so I'm going to grab that one. And then the next one is to the right of me. And then we can go and drop down a bit here. Again, we're just feathering the right trigger, which isn't really a great button that you want to feather. But what you want to do is you want to be able to get through this next section. Flappy Bird style to activate the switch. Don't get too much forward momentum or else you'll crash into that gate. And then you can unactivate the drone. Jump up with Lana. Make Mui follow you. And proceed to the left. <sighs> Take a deep breath and pat yourself on the back if you were able to complete that without making any mistakes. It does get even a little bit, I wouldn't say harder, but there's definitely some more ways you could die, so be careful. Here you want to crouch through the hole and then drop down. Alright, so here there's a very specific way you want to go. You want to jump to the right, then you want to go down on this ledge, go down on the next ledge, and then jump across to the right. Here, pull yourself up. You need a running start to get across this gap. If you don't get a running start, that is a terrible way to fail a two or three hour run. Then you'll be able to walk forward into this next area and there is a roughly two or three minute walking, talking, story building, cinematic extravaganza. So I'll rejoin you with some commentary at the end of the cutscene. Keep in mind, there will be a cutscene and right after the cutscene, you need to start running away from an enemy. So you want to pay attention to what's happening on screen or else you will mess up after the cutscene and not escape on time. Basically, after the cutscene, there will be an escape um, section where you'll need to follow Mui through a bunch of different turns and enemies to escape successfully. Here we found the area where it seems that they keep all of the humans. And obviously our journey here is that we're trying to find Elo, who was in our village with us near the very beginning of the game. I want to say they're our sister, but I'm pretty bad at judging these types of stories. Maybe they're our mother. Who knows? I'm sure someone in the comments knows. Jump across the gaps, by the way, if that wasn't obvious. Again, a cutscene does start here. It does last a decent chunk of time, but you want to make sure you're ready to run to the right as soon as this cutscene ends. Well, next cutscene. Sorry. No matter how many notes I take for a playthrough like this, there's only so many notes I can read and play at the same time. 
before uh, you know it starts to all become one single blur how long the game is. This is the cutscene where you have to run to the right hand side as soon as it ends. So now we are running and escaping from the robots to the right hand side. And we're gonna basically be following Mui. You wanna jump down this hole even though it seems very dangerous. That's the only way through. We will slide down the platform. Then we will slide down the next platform uh, and jump down. You can follow Mui, but if you're really fast, you'll be faster than them. Go down and to the right, and then drop down here, sliding down, following Mui, who then goes to the left instead of the right, dropping down and sliding your way through. At the end here, run to the right, and you'll be able to barely squeak through this door with Mui as the enemies chase you. If done successfully, you'll get a loading screen to the next area. At this point, we just want to continue all the way to the very far right of the screen. There's not a lot left uh, in terms of gameplay. There are a couple of cutscenes left and there's this kind of final boss battle we're working our way towards. But I think it's actually one of the easier parts of the game to be 100% honest. Um, and it doesn't really take too long. Um, but you're basically running all the way to the right hand side of the screen. Drop down when you are ready. And basically the way this works is that you'll be, uh, this light in the middle of the room will be pulsing on a timer. And when it pulses, it's dangerous. And Mui will be able to open up these platforms for us where we'll be able to hide under it and get cover. So the first thing you want to do is run all the way to the right and you're going to send Mui up and to the right to activate the switch. But as soon as he activates it, you want to recall him in order to get into safety underneath that platform or else it won't turn out nicely for Mui. So press Y and then hold B to get Mui to follow you down into this area. You can then get Mui to stand at this uh, switch and I'm just going to activate the switch a couple times so you can see how it opens and closes these platforms. So with the platform open, you want to wait for a pulse. After the pulse, run to the right, jump in, and then get Mui to cover you. After the pulse, uncover yourself, jump across the gap and get into cover in the second little pit. Not a lot of time there. And then do that again to exit to the far right hand side of the screen to interact with this switch, which will spawn an orb of light near the middle of the screen, which will then need to go and interact with. You still have to be safe from the light, so you still have to jump across the gap and close the platform and then interact with the orb of light when you are ready. Now this will begin a series of quick time events that last uh, quite a while. Uh, if you don't have quick time events enabled like me, you can pretty much set down your controller and just enjoy a very long cutscene, uh, close to five minutes probably. But if you do have cut, if you do have quick time events enabled, you will need to follow the on-screen commands. You'll need to click a couple of buttons, mash a couple of buttons, and uh, this will kind of destroy the light orb. Uh, Mui will take the orb of uh, light's energy and I'll let you just enjoy this long cutscene that kind of shows the end of the story. So it's a pretty pivotal moment at the end of the game and I'd like you as a viewer to enjoy it if you are watching or playing. You can't really go wrong here as long as you're completing the on-screen quick time events and uh, that's really all you need to do for the next little while.
And with the end of that cutscene concludes chapter 12 and begins chapter 13, which brings us back to the village. And there are only a few minutes left in the game. When you do respawn, you'll walk to the left to meet up with Mui. And you do want to stay up on the top route here. Luckily, Mui did survive, and they will rejoin us here. And we will quickly notice that we are now living in harmony with the alien robot colony. All because of uh, the song and Mui's energy and abilities. I don't really understand the story. Well, I mean, the story is pretty simple on its face value. I don't know if there's necessarily like a deeper meaning that I should or shouldn't understand, but overall, it's still a very nice and touching story. Uh, now I'm also, uh, I know for certain that the person we were trying to help was our sister, and they will be available to us on the very far left of the screen. So that's where we're headed now, but we are bringing Mui with us this time. You don't have to sneak past the uh, cooking person. Just out of habit, I now drop down a large ledge instead of jumping off of it. Even though you can jump, jump off of that one, it's just a good habit to have for the flawless run. And you'll want to navigate all the way to the left, where, like before, you will find the log cart. Use the log cart to push it over to the left-hand side. Climb the log cart to the next area where you'll meet your sister. I would like to thank you for watching. If you found the video helpful, I would really appreciate if you drop a like, if you considered sending the video to a friend, if you do want to take an extra step and go above and beyond in helping support the channel, I do have a Patreon and I do have Super Chat enabled on YouTube if you want to financially help the channel in any way. Obviously never expected, but always appreciated. And here we come up to the very end of the game by crouching through this hole and then meeting our sister. You will unlock either one or three achievements at this point. You will unlock the achievement for completing the game. If you did so without dying, you will unlock the flawless achievement, which I will not be getting on screen because this is my third account. And you'll also unlock the achievement for all achievements, assuming you do have all of the shrines as well. Unfortunately, this kind of means that the flawless run does lock you out of about 310 gamer score which is unfortunate, but it is the unfortunate reality of playing this game. So you'll see that I'm going to have 690 out of 1,000. But again, if you did the flawless achievement, which I did not on this recording, you will have the full 1,000 gamer score.
And then from then on there, you will interact with your sister. This will begin the credits of the game. There is kind of a first credits and then a secondary credits that will shoot you back out to the main menu where you can replay the chapters you died on, start a new playthrough or uninstall the game. Completely up to you. Again, I'd like to thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. A super special thank you to everyone on Patreon for supporting the show. And hopefully I see you soon. Peace.